Uh, my name is uh, Corey Bauer, application engineer at uh, Go Engineer. Uh, specialize in uh, simulation. Uh, we're going to look at uh, center of gravity, tipping, and lifting. So when we're talking about center of gravity, SolidWorks has uh, a few tools built in that can help us um, look at where the center of gravity is and uh, also the, the moments of inertia. So if we go to the Evaluate tab, we can look at mass properties. And that is going to list for us the weight. And it's also going to show us the center of mass location. And it's going to give us the information about the moments of inertia. It also gives us, in the graphics, a purple symbol showing us the CG location and the direction of the moments of inertia. Uh, as we make changes to the assembly, you know, maybe we add another vessel. And then when we recalculate, you can see it moved the center of gravity over and it updated the moments of inertia. So we'll go ahead and take that out. Okay. The other thing we have in SOLIDWORKS is we have the ability to have a center of gravity symbol showing for us. So that's this bullseye or target uh, symbol that we can see. So this will help us when we get our um, lifting in the correct location. That way it will lift straight up. Okay. Another thing before we look at lifting is we want to look at uh, whether this uh, skid assembly could potentially tip over or not. Uh, so there's some rules of thumb on what kind of angle you need to have the center of gravity uh, lower than. So in this case we just modeled up a couple of protractors to show us those angles. Okay. So looking at it from this side, we can see that our center of gravity is below the cross of those two protractors. But if we look at it from the end, we can see our center of gravity is actually um, higher um, than our protractors. So we want to, if we can, we want to make some changes to the geometry uh, to get that down below. So if we just move the vessel down about as far as we can go, we can see that we get just to the point of where our protractors uh, intersect, but we can't get uh, down below it. So that means we're going to have to make uh, a change to the actual vessel and not just move it. Uh, so to do that, we're just going to edit that assembly and we're going to move the nozzle down a little bit. And then we can take a look at our CG symbol and we can see that did get us down below uh, the protractor uh, that we wanted. Okay. Now we also want to look at a couple of things um, as far as getting the pad eyes the way we want them. Okay. So we need to get the, the slings in the proper location over the CG. Um, we've got a couple of um, length requirements on those slings. Uh, the pad eyes themselves uh, with the shackles on them. What we want to do is make sure that they're not uh, getting twisted due to the loading uh, or the angle uh, not being lined up. Uh, we also put together a little bit of a spreadsheet to help us with uh, some of the lifting calculations. And we're actually going to feed that information uh, from SOLIDWORKS into that spreadsheet. Okay, so let's look at a couple of things that we did to uh, set that all up. 
the first thing we did was we represented our slings as sketch lines and we have them controlling where the the hook is and the rigging is okay and we also have this assembly set up to where the pad eye is lined up uh, with that line as well okay so right now we have it off to the side just to show the angle of those pad eyes but we want to make sure that it moves uh, with the CG so what we have is a couple of reference sketches and all we want to do is take that sketch point and lock it to that CG symbol okay. with that that's going to update our sling sketches and that also updates the angle of the pad eyes and we do have this tied to a spreadsheet so it's pulling in that information from SOLIDWORKS. So we can see it happens that our assembly is very symmetrical so our CG happened to uh, line up in the center of the assembly and that also gives us uh, equal tension in the um, all four slings. Okay. Uh, so question on the protractors. Uh, those were just parts that were modeled up in SOLIDWORKS and just uh, inserted into the assembly and mated to the corners of the of the skid. Okay, so they're not anything more than just parts. So when we do our analysis, we've got a total weight of 33,000 pounds on the skid. Uh, but if we look at the tensions because of the angle, it's actually about 11,000 in each one of those. So the pad I see um, uh, another question on the pad eyes, um, how to determine the angle that they're showing. That's just going by the rule of thumb that you want uh, or maybe a... Uh, you know, a requirement on, you know, whether it's 30 degrees from vertical or or whatever your, your standard says. And then you just set the model to that angle uh, when you create it. Okay. So we know our total weight and we know the tensions uh, in each of the slings. And we can use that for our analysis. So let's take a look at um, two different setups uh, that we want to test. So the first one is going to be an overall stress analysis uh, on the skid itself. So that means we're not going to uh, take into account the angle and the tensions in the pad eyes yet. Uh, we're just going to look at the total weight um, that is being held uh, by the skid. So this skid was created with uh, weldments in SOLIDWORKS. And when you use weldments, it's going to create uh, beam elements uh, for us. And it also creates joints. So you'll see on the screen uh, several uh, purple spheres. And that's where the beam elements are coming together at joints. Uh, the software handles that uh, automatically for us. Okay. Um, because this is a single uh, part with all of the beams, um, one thing that you have to uh, add to assemblies is bonded contacts. Uh, in this case, because it's a single part with weldments and joints, we don't have to uh, do that step. So all of the beam elements are going to be attached together with those joints. Okay. Uh, when we get to setting up fixtures, uh, because it is a beam analysis we are a little bit more limited on what fixtures we have available uh, so we can add a fixed uh, restraint to joints only so what we're doing in this analysis is we are picking the four corners uh, where the pad eyes would be so instead of pulling up on the pad eyes we're going to fix those corners of the structure and then we're going to add our force down at the bottom 
uh, representing the weight. We'll also notice when we add a force, we have a little bit, uh, we have some options and some uh, limitations that we don't have in a regular solid uh, element analysis. Okay. So we can have a force or a torque, but then those can be applied to uh, entire beams or joints, just like restraints. So restraints were joints only, and forces are joints or beams. Uh, so to make a basically a unified uh, loading, uh, we're taking the six beams on the bottom of the skid, so the four that create the outside frame, and then the two uh, braces across the middle. Uh, when we are applying our loads um, to beams, uh, we don't have an option of setting a total force. It's only per item. So we took our 33,000 pounds and we divided it by the six uh, beams that we're applying it to. Uh, we do also have to um, give the load direction a reference. And the most convenient to pick in this case is the top plane because we want our load to be perpendicular to that top plane. Okay. And you may have to reverse direction to get it pointed down uh, instead of up. Okay. Uh, so another good question. Uh, the force take into account of the frame self weight. Uh, so there's two different ways that we can handle that. Uh, one is to turn on gravity and the that would account for the frame's weight and then we would have to find out what the the weight of the equipment that we took out or in this case we're not going to turn on gravity and that 33,000 uh, pounds is also going to include uh, the weight of the frame itself. Okay, So that's the two options on how we want to take care of the self weight. Okay. And again, um, you know, in this particular analysis, we're doing just the weight of the skid and the equipment, uh, which is the true weight. Where next, when we do the pad eyes, uh, the tension in the pad eyes is going to add up to more uh, than the total weight because of the angle. So we will account for that uh, in the next analysis. Okay. Uh, when we create the mesh, The software takes those beams and are those weldments and it meshes it as beams and uh, beams are one dimensional. So that's why they look like uh, pipes on the display. It's really lines. And then uh, when it does the calculations, that's when it takes into account uh, the cross section. OK, so it meshes as lines, but during the calculation, um, it takes the uh, profile or the cross-sectional shape into an account. Okay. So once we've got our fixtures and our loads and our mesh, uh, then we can run the analysis. Uh, because it is beams, it does run uh, very quickly. So when we look at the results, um, we have uh, some different stress uh, options. Uh, one is we can look at uh, just the axial stress. Uh, we can look at the bending stress in direction one. We can look at the bending stress in direction two. Uh, we can look at kind of a worst case scenario, and that's where it's the axial and bending uh, together. Uh, we can look at torsional, and then we can also look at shear stress in direction one or direction two. So we're just going to look at the axial and bending together. So we can see the stress. Uh, we've got a, a maximum stress of a little over 11,000 uh, PSI. Okay. If we want to look at the displacement, we can also do that. So we can see we've got about 140 thousandths uh, displacement. Now, if we want our results to look a little bit more 
uh, realistic. We do actually have the option of um, displaying the results as the beam profile. Okay, so that's a checkbox uh, in the edit definition. Okay. So now we have the overall um, skid structure. And if that is um, has adequate strength, now we can focus in on the pad eyes. Uh, so for the pad eye analysis, I did a uh, configuration in SOLIDWORKS where uh, all the other bodies were um, taken out. So we've just got the four pad eyes and those sketches to get them um, in the correct angle and the load coming off um, at the correct angle. Okay. Uh, so in this case, when I uh, set up the analysis, the first thing I did was fixed the bottom of each of those pad eyes. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to do the opposite of the last analysis. I'm going to hold the bottom, and I'm going to pull in the correct uh, direction like the slings would be pulled. Okay. And for this one, I am applying the load to the eyelet, but I'm using a reference direction of the sketch itself. Okay. And then I'm applying that 11,130 uh, pounds that our spreadsheet calculated for us. Okay, so again, that spreadsheet is doing the trig uh, to figure out that loading. So I just did that same thing on all four. And again, it just so happened that everything was symmetric in this example. But uh, if it wasn't, we can just have different uh, forces in each of the pad eye uh, going to along their appropriate direction. Okay. Now this one is not weldments, so it is meshed as solids. Okay. And then we look at the stress, we can see we've got a nice uh, detailed stress in the pad eyes. Okay, so that can um, tell us whether we picked um, the appropriate thickness uh, for the loading that we needed it to be. Okay. We can also look at the displacement. And let's set that to uh, true scale. And let's set that to inches. So we've got very little displacement. We've got about six thousandths displacement. So it looks like we're getting more stress in the actual skid itself uh, than we are in the pad eyes. Okay. So we took a look at uh, center of gravity with some of the SOLIDWORKS tools. Uh, we looked at a um, clever way of doing the rigging for the sleeves, uh, slings, uh, with some sketches, reference sketches, uh, that also place the, the hook and the crane uh, over uh, the CG. Uh, fed that into a spreadsheet, uh, let it do the, the trig calculations so that we could see the tension in each one of the slings, and that fed our detailed analysis on the pad eyes. I thank everybody for uh, joining the webinar. Mm -hmm.